marketing to people and they don't know they're being marketed to. That's how you do it. I bring to you BMW comic books. Millennia, prime time BMW era. In my humble opinion, that is. Now I consider myself a BMW fan, but that super fanness is definitely fading. And that's because I believe that the current era of BMW is a marketing mess as they find their identification, as it were. You see, in the early 2000s, the Y2K had come to pass and at this point, everything was great. There wasn't much looming after the stock market crash with regards to tech in the early 2000s. Everyone was kind of settling into their own, doesn't matter what was going on in life. That would soon change. The idea of climate and the effects that it has on our weather patterns and our way of life was soon infringing on what would be all sorts of motorsports and maybe some of the dirtier things that we do as human beings. Well, with all that buzz meant that there had to be change in the automotive industry. Cars had to change to meet green initiatives, emission standards, gas mileage, all of these buzzwords that while in truth were for a good cause, it just meant a lot of marketing buzz. And right now, that buzz has changed even further towards electrification. So I talked about BMW's lack of identity. What do I mean? Well, we've got BMW, BMW M, BMW i, BMW XM now. Different perspectives on what a driver's vehicle or ultimate machine or whatever you want to call the current marketing strategy to be. BMW has diluted the M brand. It used to just be performance models. Now M can be had as a sport option on a lot of different BMWs, I believe almost all of them, and it really is maybe a mild performance, but generally aesthetic type of package. The average consumer doesn't necessarily want to be the person who is damaging the environment. So let's dial back from that while still marketing that because they still have the M cars and the M drive festival and all of these things that promote the performance car because that's at their heart what they were known for and i'm sure there's a group of engineers and marketers and managers that still love that fact of bmw i is associated with iphones apple iWatches, ipods for some reason in the automotive landscape i means green so bmw has an i3 an i8 an i4 i don't know all of these different eyes green driven environmentally friendly all natural green <laughs> What do all these words have in common? They're green marketing or green washing, some of which is specifically designed to trick consumers in order to simply sell more product. BMW doesn't really clarify marketing wise if these are performance vehicles or if they're actually just green vehicles. So are you a hyper miler or are you a performance driver? Do you go on the track or do you charge up all the time? What's, what's your option here? It's unclear. Then we get to XM. How can you have anything over 4,000 pounds that doesn't classify as just a tank? I'm not denying that any of the new BMWs aren't fast. That's not the problem here. And that's what I talk about, that turn of the millennium BMW. They were a different type of car, more about the ultimate driving machine, which was the marketing tag at the time, versus right now, they're just about being fast. Credit where it's due, they're fast, but that's about it. There's no love, there's no feel to that. Is the gray showing? Am I just being an old man? Did people from previous eras always say the older cars were better? No, they may have said that, but they're wrong. Flat out, they're wrong. Older cars, while they may have unique foibles, also come with their own type of energy and fun in terms of maintaining and driving them, but you couldn't use them as daily drivers. The risk of them not starting or you having some sort of mechanical problem means you couldn't get to the grocery store to work. You have to nurse them per se. The Millennium cars from, pick any German brand in my opinion, and maybe some of the Italians, a nice happy medium in terms of, yeah, you could use these cars every day. They had a trunk, but they had a good feel. They were fun and enjoyable to drive despite their, you know, foibles that they had. That was a peak era. How on earth does this relate to comic books and short films? Very simple. During that same period, BMW had, in my opinion, some of the best marketing possible. The ultimate driving machine. The turn of the millennium 
represented a massive space for marketing. The internet was still growing. We were getting onto it faster and faster, and it didn't have to sound like beating up a fax machine just to get online. TikTok didn't exist. Instagram didn't exist. There was a thing called MySpace. You didn't funnel to one source. People went looking for information. BMW funneled people towards their short films that were directed, written, produced in a short format that was easy to download or stream online when internet speeds still weren't great. And they were great stories that represented not the vehicle itself. The vehicle was never really a core aspect of the story. It was really about the actors, directors, and writers in terms of what they were trying to convey because there was all sorts of different stories. The BMW films had all sorts of different names, but the overarching title was The Hire. The idea that a driver was hired. And let me tell you right now, this was pre-transporter. Jason Statham and the Transporter film series can sit out because they started in 2002. But these BMW short films actually showcased an E38 doing performance driving in 2001. I wonder if maybe there was some correlation between the Transporter character and Clive Owen's driver character in the Hire series. I leave that to you to decide now that you know. All of the Hire series films were five to 10 minutes, very easy to digest. All sorts of them included many different BMWs from the BMW 7 series at the time, the Z3, the Z4, the M5, the E39 there, that was a good one. And all of them showcased around different stars. We had Clive Owen, Stellan Skarsgård, Don Cheadle, Gary Oldman, James Brown, Marilyn Manson, Madonna. Did I say Don Cheadle? Why are they doing this? Drive or we're dead. I think so. There's just so many, I couldn't memorize them all. Just go Google it if you're interested. And then there were directors, okay? All sorts of big names, and that just made for great stories. Google it yourself, they are all wonderful, go have a watch. Now there's a bit of a link here. I have a BMW Z4, as you may or may not know, and it's a big star in a lot of these films. One in particular called The Hostage was just an absolute wonderful piece of driving. Not only is the story great with regards to why The Hostage was taken, you know, about money, about love, and there's some great driving scenes as well. So I do definitely recommend that one, but it was a big sell for me. The BMW Z4 was its own character in terms of its driving, while not being a main character in the actual storylines. So what they were able to do with these films was market all the cars without actually marketing the cars. Good job, marketing department. Marketing the people and they don't know they're being marketed to. That's how you do it. BMWfilms.com presents The Hire. I bring to you BMW comic books. That's right, they exist. Only four issues of them. Storylines, illustration, and direction that's different for every single comic. Unique, just like the BMW short films. Something that I truly enjoyed and I've hung on to these is a bit of BMW memorabilia. Best part in my opinion is the fact that they intended to do six issues and there were only ever four. Tells you how popular it was. But if you're a BMW fan, now you know there's a piece of memorabilia that exists you probably didn't know about. I hope you can feel my passion behind this here because BMW in that era was a different type of brand. Yeah, I'm not just talking about the cars. I'm talking about the whole brand. Ferrari sells you cologne. It sells you sweaters. BMW does the same thing. But BMW also had more amazing and more feel behind their cars and the brand itself in the early 2000s. It was a whole thing. Throwing Madonna around in an E39 M5 was something never seen before. She it. it was hilarious. You gotta go watch that one as well. And the comic books. Why would you ever have a comic book other than a bit of fun? And that's what's missing these days. Fun. BMW and other brands are just starting to take themselves more and more seriously because everyone just wants to go A to B. We're buying cars where you just wanna sit in a living room and go somewhere. I get it. But we're missing out on the fact that the drive itself used to be fun. They're not marketing that to us anymore. And those that have never driven before or have never really cared about that marketing, now don't think about that aspect of driving. And it all gets lost because we just want to get A to B. Let me know what you think in the comments. Be sure to like and subscribe. And remember, all gas, no brakes.